So uh, I've been uh, with the Young Zoologist Association uh, since 1993. I'm a lecturer in technology. Now, what I would say is rather than uh, uh, going through in detail much, we will start with uh, the basics about snakes. Now, uh, in general, the snakes are creatures that everybody is afraid of. So, first of all, like people say that looking at a snake, uh, this is the this is the first part. Now, looking at the snake, you will think, okay, it's scary and it's shiny and uh, it's uh, like eerie to touch. Likewise, so but having said that, I would have to admit they are the most cleanest animals in the world. The reason being is their scales are so repellent and uh, it's. Uh, so clean and there will be no dust or anything uh, being stuck into it. So first of all is that. And secondly, these animals are part of the nature. So these are needed, much needed for the biodiversity. Biodiversity means the environment. So they actually work in this uh, the food chain, part of that that they are a part of controlling mechanism of the animal kingdom. So basics would be you will find snakes everywhere in the country. Sri Lanka being a tropical country, you will find snakes from north to east, south to west. Now in Sri Lanka there are about 118 species of snakes in Sri Lanka and out of which uh, nearly 55 to 60% are endemic to Sri Lanka, which means you will find them only in this small country in the world. So having said that, Sri Lankan biodiversity is a very rich uh, diversity into snakes and reptiles. Now, I'm just referring only to the snakes in this part. I will not go into other animals, the reptilia, where uh, you will uh, uh, find like the uh, crocodiles, the geckos, the other lizards, and uh, I would say, uh, what do you call it, uh, the uh, and the turtles and the tortoises. I'm not referring to that. I will generally touch on the snakes only on this particular part. So, having said that, the Sri Lankan uh, snakes, there are 118 almost. Now, there are still studies going on. Studying about the snakes and reptiles are called herpetology. Herpetology. Herpens means snakes. So, herpetology is studying about snakes and other reptiles. Now, particularly in Sri Lanka, I said like biodiversity wise, our species are so enriched and they are so endemic, maybe 50%. So out of which uh, nearly 14 uh, species are living in the sea, which means they rarely come to the land, like they are called sea snakes. And these sea snakes are deadly venomous. So but the human fatalities are very low, which means you hardly find any records of these sea snakes attacking humans, neither the, uh, the fishermen. So, which means uh, nearly 96%, 96 species are living on the land. Now, out of this, you can categorize snakes into uh, different uh, levels by where they live. Now, you will find snakes on the ground. Those are ground uh, species, as well as underneath the ground, that is dwelling. Ground dwelling, they live underground. And there will be species who are on trees, they are called arboreal. And then some species, they live in the water, they call aquatic. So those are fundamentals on the snakes. And uh, I would say on the land, animals nearly about actually not nearly 
about five of them would be the deadly venoms, which means if they migrate, there's a high risk of uh, you will, uh, they can cause you death. And the rest of the snakes are not uh, deadly venomous, where you will not uh, sustain a fatality. So, which means we have to be aware only of these five deadly species where you should not uh, come across with or play around with. Now, first of all, now these snakes, wherever they are, they always try to uh, not to confront humans or other animals. When, uh, say, suppose if you're walking on a paddy or you're walking in the jungle, or say, suppose you are just taking uh, just a walk in the ground, if there are snakes, uh, in that area, they will not come after you. That's a common myth that people will believe that snakes are attacking you, they're coming after you, and they just try to attack you. The, the reason being is these snakes are not uh, uh, like aggressive, like they are, unless they are being cornered or they, they don't find a place to hide themselves, they will start attacking. That is actually purely a defense mechanism. They will not attack you unless they have to. Now, the reason being is now, as mammals, we are a species that can change our body temperature based on the environment and based on our requirement. So, we are warm bodied, warm blooded animals. So, we maintain our temperature within ourselves. But the reptiles, the snakes, they being cold blooded, they have to depend on the environment to maintain their body temperature. The reason behind this is high simple. So, say, uh, now you would ask, uh, you've been told, I obviously I understand, that uh, once a snake eats something, they can uh, hibernate or go neutral uh, or just eat stay as it is for months and months. The reason behind that is as warm body animals like me, you, or the other mammals, they, whatever they consume for food, nearly 95 to 98% goes into keeping their body warm. Which means most of the food we eat are being used to maintain our body temperature. But the snake being all the other animals, whatever the food that they take are being used only to develop their body mass or the body strength, which means 98 to, uh, I would say, 95% would be used to maintain their body, not to keep their body warm. In that case, that's why one say uh, five, they take, uh, they eat something, I would say, this follow rather they can maintain their body temperature and they can go without food for about months and months and because of that they have a rapid growth like say if you look at uh, the hatchling coming out from uh, they will grow about six times within a year from their body and length so those are these fundamentals that you need to understand about this now Given that there are two types of uh, uh, types of birds given by the snakes. Now, one is they lay eggs. The other one they give birth to life uh, uh, to enhance, I would say. So now you will be like confused why these are the how they just come out like life. Just like their parents and others, they just lay eggs. The reason is this. Now, as a reptilian, they just go, they grow in a sack inside their body. So, uh, the primitive species like uh, boas or the pythons, they lay eggs. And the, the environment, the temperature in the environment, they patrol and they lay, uh, I would say, incubated by the and the, after about uh, months, 
the, the little ones will come out. But the other, the developed, I would say, uh, species like uh, vipers and uh, other uh, venomous ones, they have a mechanism where the insects are kept inside their body and uh, once they have only the small version of the parents will come out. So that's where the difference is. So which means one way or another, uh, they are coming a sack. And they either they lay the eggs and that will incubate or inside the mother's body they will incubate and the little ones will come out, the juveniles. So there's a special word for that. Now if the snake is uh, laying eggs, we call it polypheras, and uh, if the juveniles are coming out straight from the mother, then we call it viviparous. But those things are you can find uh, online. You can do some research and find out. Now that's basics and uh, about the, the snakes and their reproduction. And uh, in general, now actually I can give you more information scientifically. About Sri Lankan, you know, the world snakes, the families, and everything. But I would like to use this uh, limited time for you to understand the mechanism and understand uh, the snakes in our vicinity. So, because obviously, when you go out camping or when you go on track, you will find snakes and reptiles, and you would need to uh, venomous uh, snakes or any. Uh, other non venomous. Now, going into that part, I would say in Sri Lanka, you need to understand that these five venomous snakes are. Now, to so starting with, now, there are crates, I would say, uh, we call it uh, the Kilon crate and the Indian crate. Okay, so those are the ones that you need to be aware of, and Ceylon crate is endemic to Sri Lanka. Indian one is uh, not endemic, which means it's all over the world, all over the South Asian world. And then the, the Russell's viper. That's a viper that you will find. And I will just give you basics about these snakes. Now I will come into that part, but let me just go with the five. And then uh, the so Russell's viper and the source uh, viper, uh, that is the little, the sand green viper that you will find. And then uh, you will find uh, the Nardona, the means the cobra. Those are the five you need to worry about. But uh, now, the Russell's viper is a common species all over the country you will find. You can easily identify that from their shape of their head. Their head is more like a Okay, so rectangle, uh, not a sphere, actually a rectangle, I would say. Uh, so the head is like that. So you can have a little feet, uh, your uh, fingers, the thumb, and the index together, and both hands, you will create the, the rectangle. So similar to that is their head. And they have a very short and bulky body. And they have across their body. So these spots are going in three lines. Uh, one will be along their, uh, let's say, uh, backbone, simply, okay? So, and the other two lines will be in both sides of their body. So, muscle structure is something that you can take on land. Is what I will do is, after this uh, meeting, I will send some slides which uh, your group admin can share with you. It gives basics about the snakes, so you will get familiar with And the Russell's point on. Similarly, the, uh, the source can the small one, the it is coming out, I would say. That one is also uh, coming from uh, the northeast area and towards the sand dunes. So you will really have to get the first one, the Colombo or South in that area, so don't worry about that. And the, the Narjana or the Cobra is 
would know the country. So you can easily see, uh, identify, or based on learning, you all can see Cobra one time in your life. And the other two are the trails. Now, Sri Lankan, common Ceylon trail, and the Indian ones are very easy to find, very easy to identify. Now, in Colombo region, uh, there are a lot of people that hold of them, but uh, towards a Matagama or towards Rathapura, uh, you will find the Ceylon trail. And uh, even though we say that uh, the Indian trail is restricted to the dry zone, now uh, because of the weather and the human uh, transportation and uh, human movements, these species are uh, found all over the country, I would say. So the climates are changing and uh, these guys are just found all over. So, but in general, these two traits, they can be easily identified first. Uh, they are not very aggressive. So they will not try to attack you very much. They will always try to evade you. Rather than attacking you and come after you, they will try to evade you. And uh, that's uh, one thing. And then they have a very shiny black body with rings around it or like favorite rings. So my slides will show you how to differentiate them. So don't rush into taking these notes very much. It will give you good identification. And uh, what I will say is uh, on that back ridge, you will clearly see an enlarged scale, which is very much prominent than the other scales in the body. So this ridge clearly gives the indication that these are the two species from other trails. Now, the reason being to say that there are other species is this. Now, in snake uh, biology, not the biology, I would say the biodiversity in the environment, there are many snakes who would use that as the, they would try to imitate a venomous worm to protect themselves. Now, it's like uh, survival of the fittest. There are species, now, say suppose, uh, take example, you and me, if you are a small built person, and if you get constant uh, threats from your friends, you would either run when you see someone try to challenge you. Or you would try to fight someone who would try to challenge you. I'm not encouraging you, but this is the example. And the second, the third one would be either you will try to show your uh, counter, uh, like say uh, your challenger, that you are uh, in friends with some other strong party, which means say there's a group of uh, students or your friends which are stronger, which are powerful. If you get identified with someone, you what would you do is to get closer uh, to uh, those friends to ensure that because of your friendship that these guys will not attack you. Similarly, that's being uh, inherited by the, uh, the animal kingdom as well. Now, some species are strong, which means they have venom and they are fast, like say the vipers. They have venom glands which they will use to attack when they are threatened. And then some species are faster, they will run away. I would say the common black snake. Say if you take some kerosene towards them, I'm not encouraging you, but don't ever do that. But if you threaten them, they will disappear in a fast of a thunder. So they are fast. Then the others will try to imitate, like say uh, the crates. There are certain species uh, in Sri Lanka, they almost look like the common crate or the Indian crate. The body, the setup, 
and that they make the way they behave, they all must depart. Only differentiate them from the actual prayer is that the enlarged scale that I was telling you about. Similarly, that and there are some species of uh, uh, snakes in Sri Lanka who would try to flatten themselves and show like a hood. Now, as example, uh, there's a, a, scale, a snake called uh, the, uh, I would say the scientific name is Cylindropis maculatus, but everybody call it the Batman. Now, people will say it has two heads. Actually, not. The reason being is his tail being curved and upheld against his body as a hood, which means they try to imitate the cobra. So, those are just uh, protective mechanisms that they use. So, that's why I was telling you, referring to the common traits, the Indian trait and the Sri Lankan trait, are being imitated by others. That's how they live clearly differentiated with that creature. So, bear in mind, these are the five species that you need to be aware of. Now, what I would say, in general, snakes are like that. Now, when it comes to the the history of the, the, the world states. Now, they are actually about 115 million years old. That's where the fossils are coming from. Now, these fossils are uh, Cretaceous period, we call it. So, 120 to 94 million years old. Now, these in 2015, uh, they found uh, fossils which dates back to 120 million years from Brazil. So based on that, if, if that fossil carries uh, the characteristics of the snakes, the common, uh, the, the current snakes characteristics they have. So that's why they say they evolved from that. Now what they say is they actually uh, evolved from this uh, aquatic uh, species are coming into land and then uh, we, uh, I would say uh, then they became uh, uh, like subject to all these environment conditions based on that uh, they will uh, non avian dinosaurs I would say not the flying ones the other dinosaurs from them they separated they evolved and they became this common snake. Now, on this, you will find uh, so primitive ones will still indicate the, uh, I would say, they have still have the remains of uh, the evolution in them, like say uh, the boas and the pythons. Uh, they are so primitive, they have fully, they have not fully evolved themselves, so they still carry. Uh, the remains of the, uh, the limbs of the reptiles in them. So when people say that they have, like say, common limb, if you take a, uh, if you when you see a python, the, the handler would say that the palm are a couple of limbs. Now those are actually not limbs. They are, uh, the, uh, I would say, disappearing limbs from their origin. That some lizards. So. That's why they are so primitive in this uh, snake evolution. And the evolved ones are the main evolved ones, I would say, the vipers. Now, they are totally evolved. They have uh, the renal mechanism as well as uh, they uh, have uh, movements in their teeth where they can individually move them. And when they open their mouth, the teeth will come out. The venom gland, venom, venomous teeth, they will come out, and uh, when they shut down, they will uh, be uh, like reclined back to their uh, mouth. So they are just individually moving, and they have other factors which I will not go into detail. It, it would be much easier for us to have a physical meeting and go through these details, but obviously, you are more than welcome. You can go into uh, uh, the sites you can check online, you will find all these details. And uh, now, all over the world, you will find snakes 
uh, every continent apart from uh, Antarctica. Okay, so you will find, and there are certain countries you will not find any animals like the snakes. Uh, you know, that is like uh, Ireland, Iceland, New Zealand, in those countries you will not. But other than that, they are all very scarce. So all over the world, there are about 3,900 uh, to 4,000 species of snakes. I'm just referring to snakes. Okay, they are all I'm just referring to snakes. They are all. And uh, you can find uh, snakes uh, all over, but say, uh, in the continents, the Himalayas, where it's about 3,900, uh, uh, I say 4,900 meters high, that is 16,000 feet above, you will not find it. So they are all very spread. And uh, those are the general about snakes in the world. Now, coming back to Sri Lanka, so there are about, as I said, uh, 118 species, to worry about, and uh, nearly 50% of them are endemic to Sri Lanka. Yeah, uh, you can just find out. And I will send you uh, the checklist of the snakes for your records in future. Now, snakes, you have got a bit of idea, I believe. But now, this is the part we need to concentrate on. Say, if you walk on a track over jungle, if you've been bitten or if you've been attacked by a snake, what are the actions you need to take? First of all, if you are bitten, don't get scared. Don't try to run. Don't do anything. Just think for a second. Okay? This you can apply to yourself or any friend or anyone that you come across who has been bitten. Now, calm that person, which means if it's not you, calm that other person. And first of all, make him realize you've been bitten. And if you can, Identify the species that they were bitten with. So, if there are not like five species that you are uh, being informed of, there's nothing to worry about. Okay? But say, suppose if it's a cobra, if it's a viper, if it's a, a, a crate, as I said, then there's something to be alarmed of. But still, you are still not uh, being driven to. A fatality. Okay, so it will take a little bit of time. But first of all, be calm. And secondly, uh, make sure that you wash that the place that it was bitten. Not don't put much pressure, just uh, uh, pour some water, make sure that the venom, uh, the, the bitten mouth being clean, cleared off, which means any venom left outside the wound will be washed away. Okay, that's the second part. And thirdly, tell yourself or if you are bitten or the other person that we will bring help or we will take you to the nearest hospital. And don't worry and don't try to do any other uh, medications or anything, just take them straight to the nearest hospital. And if you can, Take the animal with you if you can identify that would be a great help. If not, just take them straight and uh, make sure that the person gets the relevant uh, medication. So, when you go to the hospital, if you take the hospital, just say, We are being bitten, and this is where we are. And they will give uh, antivenin or whatever the medication, the local medication, based on uh, the identification of the species. And the person giving the information about the snake, and they will do that. Okay, so first of all, don't get panicked. Now, that is if you are bitten. And the second part would be how not to get bitten. That part would be if you travel, if you go uh, in, a, in a jungle or track barefoot, make sure you take uh, like heavy steps. Now these uh, snakes are very concerned and they are very aware of the sounds and the vibrations. If you walk hard on the floor, on the ground, they will hear, they will feel the vibration, they will go away. And other thing you do, uh, just take a torch or a satellite so you will see them in front. 
and the other thing you do is just turn the stitch for something. When you take the stitch, just make sure that you make constant noise in front of you uh, when you go. These uh, snakes will go away. So that is that. And uh, if you can wear a high boot or a long uh, trouser or something, so that will ensure that you have a lesser chance of getting bitten by a snake. Okay, so those are the basics about uh, snakes, and uh, I believe that uh, you got some idea about the snakes of Sri Lanka. And make sure that now, whenever you go out, that you don't have to disturb the environment. If you see a snake, go to it and let it be, they will go away. They will not come up to you like that. Like, say, if you see a snake in the tree, you will shout out loud, but the snake won't. When, you, when the snake feels that they are threatened, the first thing they will do is try to stay or run away. So they will do that. So ensure that you don't go after them or to make a big fuss out of it. Just let them be in their habitat. And they will. And bear in mind, they the snake, they be in this environment before us. So they are a part of us, a part of the environment more than us. So we have to respect that. Uh, we have to uh, protect them because this, they are part of this uh, food chain and the environment and the biodiversity. So uh, those are the basics about this. I hope that you got some kind of a uh, basic idea about Sri Lankan uh, snakes and the general uh, breed of the world and the understanding of And uh, uh, I will communicate all the information to you. And, uh, I will send the details uh, to your president so you can do it. And I would say, now, as part of the Young Bridges Association, where I represent, you are more than welcome to join us uh, at the National Zoological Gardens. We conduct lectures uh, on different various uh, categories, I would say birds, reptiles, and uh, mammals, uh, fish likewise. So this each uh, uh, area is about one year long uh, subject uh, field. So you will learn about snakes. When you come to the first group, you will learn about snakes and uh, lizards, the turtles, everything. So you get an idea about that. You can uh, enrich your knowledge, be with the environment. So uh, you can come to the zoo on a Sunday and uh, just ask them to be able to buy the same day, the young students and young students. Now you can get the name again. And uh, I welcome you and I look forward to seeing you in the zoo. And uh, we can go into more detail about the anatomy and the biodiversity, the snakes, and you can be given live uh, specimens to look around, touch them, and to work on. So please do that. And uh, if you have any questions, just ask me. Uh, I can go into the details, which I would not think would be suitable at this time. But uh, if you have any questions, just throw away, and we will try to answer to the best of my capacity. And uh, thank you all for joining me today. And, uh, uh, let's start the question and answers. If that's okay with you. Thank you. Yep. So let me have any questions if you have any. And uh, I will try to answer. Or else uh, you can drop me an email on, uh, I'll just send that as well. Uh, yeah. And uh, all, uh, all my mobile code is 07 And just drop me a question at any time. And uh, if I don't answer on phone, just drop it. I will get back to you. And uh, uh, yeah, how many types? I would say species about. Uh, 
than 18. Uh, speech is about 180, which means it's still finding when it used to be 105, there are new subspecies or identifications being done. So it's uh, adding up number. So it's about 118 at the moment. This is as per uh, the August last year. There are some research going on by my colleagues. So there will be new uh, subspecies or identification being done. So there will be more. How many venomous? Deadly five on land. Deadly uh, uh, in and I say, give me one second. Yep, uh, okay. Uh, about forty to And the uh, other thing is like I can say uh, the biggest would be uh, python. Uh, Indian, not Indian dog python, you will not find it here. Uh, I just and I would say now, yes, uh, one of your friends has typed that they used to have a bronze back. Now I would not recommend using as the case, they belong to the only wild, let them be. But if you find the golden one, you can immediately take it to the National Geological Gardens where the uh, vets will look after it. And uh, are there any friendly harmless or aggressive species? Yes. Uh, yes. Now, the uh, harmless, they are all actually harmless. Unless you provoke them, say if you try to uh, pest in them, they will attack you. They will try to actually that is self-defense. So and the and snakes uh, see at night. Actually, no. What would happen is their eyesight is very poor. Their trunk is forked. Now you can see that every kind of snake would have come out, and they actually take the molecules in the air. And they have a special gland called detoxin. They use those molecules, they will stick into their fork, uh, they take it in the detoxin uh, the gland will convert into data, into information. So they can feed the environment from the molecules. So uh, now that's how they see, but they can't see because they are not uh, very, they don't have much in But the cat snakes in the night, in like say, in the, uh, we call it uh, marking room, they have a better view than the others. Is the eyes are like cats. You can see the, uh, the conicus of the eye is just like a cat. So, cloning would be like a uh, cat. That's why they are not explained. They are even dead. They don't have uh, uh, much visibility. Um, I think you can be able to do Now, the Pythons, they can eat anything that they can come across. I'm not saying vegetables or fruits, but any warm blooded creatures. What they do is, when they put their tongue on the photon, they feel the warm blood and they attack and so on. They will first, uh, they will have a destination. They will just graduate this person. So there is a set ensure that you can swallow. Otherwise, they will not. And where do they live? They live on the burrows, so you can do any other thing. There's no particular place that we can say, but in this uh, area, they can use them. Uh, when you come out to Marshland, you will find it. Uh, that is the deadliest snake in the world. I would say the mammals, because they are about to attack. And uh, actually, the mammals are the fastest, and uh, the, uh, the deadliest species in all.
sales are used to be prescribed by the CS. They require not fly in the air. Thank you.